Hey guys, in this video, most of the work on the fuselage for the Nebula D2.1 is going to be wrapped up. Uh, there's still some fiberglass and carbon fiber work I need to do here and there, but for the most part, a lot of it's finished. Uh, so first thing I did was sand uh, all of the foam pieces after I glued them together, and then did a light, did a few layers of light foam spackle before I started fiberglassing. Uh, I fiberglass the fuselage in two halves, doing the bottom half first, and then sanding the edges after that was done, curing, and then doing the top side, so that the fuselage is pretty much in two fiberglass shells, one on the bottom and one on the top, with some overlap on the sides. Uh, so here's some footage of the fiberglassing. <music> I did end up adding a bit more weight to the front landing gear steering mechanism. Uh, on the previous design, it was just a 3D printed arm that used a set screw to attach to the landing gear, but on this design, I ended up embedding some uh, aluminum collars into it and then had a set screw that goes through the aluminum collar and the 3D printed material and sets against the axle. So uh, the sheer strength of the pin holds everything together and I should be able to get more traction on the landing gear and not need to worry about this, the actual steering arm slipping on the landing gear. For the rear landing gear, I made an attachment plate for the landing gear to attach to with four millimeter bolts. Uh, this is so that it can be removed for transport or if a landing gear ever get damaged or if I need larger landing gear or want a different set of landing gear, I can swap them out. And then for the rear tail surfaces, I just reused the ones from the previous design. Uh, but I took off the 3D printed fairing to save some weight. I'm just going to make a foam fairing. I 
I've worked a little bit more on the wings since last time, mainly getting the motor mounts installed and some of the wiring done on one of the wings with the servos. Uh, so far the all up weight is about 2.3 kilograms, which isn't too bad. <laughs> I decided to move the ESC and the servo outside the motor mount to save a bit on the thermal budget, primarily because I swapped to the largest motors that would fit inside the actual motor mount. Since I'm moving the ESCs for the motor inside the primary part of the fuselage, and since I'm using a larger PEC for the system, I decided to change over to a NACA duct with a larger cross-sectional area for airflow instead of the previous inlets that were on the nose. I added additional carbon fiber reinforcement to a few external areas and a few internal areas of the aircraft. That's just to reinforce any weak spots from me cutting stuff out of the plane or like where the where anything attaches like the tail or the landing gear. I'll do the same thing for parts of the wings and the actual wing box structure whenever those are finished and ready to be integrated to the fuselage. The total weight of the entire fuselage right now is 1.7 kilograms, which is pretty impressive how light it is. It's light enough that I can grab the landing gear with one hand and lift the entire thing up. With the wings included, the all-up weight of the plane right now is 4.1 kilograms, which with the 700 grams from the batteries puts it up at 4.8 kilograms. Uh, there's going to be more weight added before it's completely done, but it looks like the weight's going to come in below the 5.5 kilograms that the last plane was. Uh, and with the increased uh, wing area, that means that the wing loading for this is going to be lower. Uh, not to mention the motors produce about 800 to 1200 grams more thrust compared to the ones I used previously. So this plane should have a lot more performance compared to the last Nebula V2. So I'm looking forward to hopefully not crashing this one. Thanks for watching everyone.